What if I told you that this guy, yes, this guy, has a lot of use in the current state of Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes? For the most part, Magma Trooper is seen as the runt of the Imperial Trooper family, but in today's video, I'm going to show you that Magma Trooper, a very accessible free-to-play character, has a lot of use in Arena currently, does some insane damage in the Sith Triumvirate Raid, and as many of you guys know already, he has a very strong purpose in the Rancor Raid as well. So today we're mainly going to focus on the Sith Trevor Raid and the Magma Trooper trick as well as Magma Trooper in Arena. We'll talk a little bit towards the end about the Rancor Raid as well as some downsides of using Magma Trooper and the various compositions I'm going to show you. But without further ado, let's go and get right into it. So to start this off, I want to talk about why we are doing this video because a lot of you guys may be saying, man, this is such a random topic to cover, but really it isn't. For those of you that have been following me for a while, almost a year ago, the last time Arena was debuff heavy, I made a video on how Magma Trooper was a really strong counter to the meta that existed a year ago, which mainly consisted of Darth Vader Zeta leadership as well as TIE Fighter Pilot. The strategy in Arena back then was having a super fast TIE Fighter pilot that would open up, apply a bunch of debuffs, and in return, Magma Trooper would get a bunch of turn meter and then throw his thermal imploder, get rid of all the opposing turn meter, and then give your team the advantage to start taking their turns. But then later on, the meta turned into a very tenacity and cleanse heavy meta, so the trick of Darth Vader Zeta and Magma Trooper kind of seeped into the night, but now we're back full swing where once again, the meta is based off a lot of debuffs and the enemy relying on a very fast character to apply debuffs at the very beginning of the battle. And with that history lesson out of the way, we go to our first topic of how Magma Trooper plays a really good role in the current state of Arena. Now, when debuffs become a main core component of Arena, Magma Trooper, a very underrated character, pops his head up because he screams anti debuffs and he's kind of a counter to debuff heavy teams and he can remove a ton of turn meters. Let's go and talk about this strategy here. This team that we're composing for Arena mainly revolves a Grand Admiral Thrawn leadership as well as Magma Trooper because both of these characters gain turn meter when debuffs are either being applied or being resisted, so they kind of work hand in hand together. First, taking a look at Grand Admiral Thrawn, you're going to want to put him in the leadership position. Besides all the max protection he's giving to Empire allies as well as offense boost, he also gives plus 20% turn meter whenever they resist a detrimental effect or suffer a debuff, and this works perfectly with with Magma Trooper's unique. Magma Trooper fits in this puzzle with Grand Admiral Thrawn because of the hazard training unique. Basically, he gets plus 30% tenacity, and on top of that, gains 70% turn meter the first time he resists a detrimental effect or suffers a debuff each turn. And that screams a mini Grand Admiral Thrawn leadership for Magma Trooper himself. So, for example, if a single debuff either got resisted or applied to Magma Trooper because of Grand Admiral Thrawn's leadership, that's 20% turn meter right there, and Magma Trooper gives himself 70% turn meter, so 90% turn meter in total, which is close to him having another turn. So all this turn meter talk, it's all cool, fine, and dandy, but what's really the point I'm trying to drive at here? Well, here's the main point we're going to get at now. Pretty much every Emperor Palpatine team out there in the top end of Arena relies on Darth Vader, because Darth Vader gets a lot of bonus speed for each Empire ally, each Sith ally, and for each Rebel and Jedi enemy, so he's pretty much going first for most games. Darth Vader is pretty much the job engineer for the Empire and in a Palpatine versus Palpatine team it all comes down to whose Darth Vader gets to go first but Magma Trooper is the balancing factor when going up against Darth Vader and Emperor Palpatine. Chances are the opposing Darth Vader is going to go first and by default the AI always uses Force Crush which applies a ton of debuffs on all of your allies. And this is where the magic happens people because of Darth Vader's AoE that applies all the debuffs so much turn meter from Grand Admiral Thrawn and Magma Trooper himself is fueling Magma Magma Trooper to get 100% turn meter. Then finally, Magma Trooper strikes back by using his Thermal Imploder, and this ability is guaranteed to remove 30% turn meter, assuming you pass the whole potency tenacity check, but it has the possibility of removing up to 60% turn meter. And the other cool thing is that this attack also ignores armor. And at this point, Magma Trooper bought you so much time by pushing that enemy line back. You now have all this time to fracture, stun, increase cooldowns, remove buffs, whatever you gotta do, because now they have a lot of catching up to do. So as you're seeing, people, the strategy is all about Magma Trooper either suffering a debuff or resisting a debuff so frequently that he's constantly using Thermal Imploder. And the good thing is there are so many 
many opportunities for the enemy to apply debuffs on the Magra Trooper. For example, Darth Scion. Every time Magra Trooper is hitting Darth Scion, he's getting pain inflicted on himself, and in turn, he's gaining turn meter from his unique and Thrawn's leadership. So that right there is kind of a counter to Scion, allowing Magra Trooper to gain a lot of turn meter and then quickly follow up with his thermal imploder. This is such a fun lineup to run in Arena, and on paper, it's really one of the strongest counters to Emperor Palpatine lineups. Emperor Palpatine and his cohorts, they're applying so many debuffs, it's just fueling so much turn meter for your team and Magma Trooper at the beginning of the battle and throughout the battle. And as a thank you for all that turn meter Emperor Palpatine is serving for you, you go ahead and remove turn meter with your Thermal Imploder, which is a straight up counter to Emperor Palpatine Zeta on his leadership. Of course, there are some downsides with using this lineup, and I wanna make sure you guys have the full picture of the situation. And the main problem is that the Thrawn leadership AI has no idea what it's doing. There is a battle, I defeated the enemy in about a minute and a half, and for about three minutes straight, they just could not figure out what to do when Darth Sign was the only character left. The AI for Thrawn constantly wants to cleanse themselves for every little thing and when it's not needed. So because of the poor AI, they're just gonna constantly cleanse themselves and just feed Terminator to the other team. So that's pretty much the main downside of using this in Arena, but do keep in mind, a lot of teams are losing on defense in Arena. A lot of teams can beat each other. So you take that point however you'd like to. But the other downside is Magra Trooper is extremely hard to gear. Probably has one of the highest requirements for stun cuffs. Needs about 300 stun cuffs and a lot of Carbonti. So something to keep in mind if you do want to invest in him. But let's move on to our second topic of the Sith Triumvirate Raid. Something that more of you guys might be interested in because there's been a lot of drama circulating the raid currently and the need for Jedi training raid. And people have been trying to find lineups that do well aside from Jedi training raid teams. Well, luckily with Magra Trooper and Death Trooper, you got yourself an awesome bromance that does amazing things for the Sith raid. The lineup I think you guys should be aiming for is Thrawn, Magma Trooper, Death Trooper, Veers, and Shore Trooper, and either a Thrawn or a Veers leadership, depending on what you like. Thrawn's leadership, you mean to get all that turn meter bonus for Magma Trooper, but Veers, you're getting additional speed and a little bit of turn meter when buffs are being spread around your team. So the leadership is mostly preference, but I think Thrawn leadership might be your best bet, and I'm gonna explain what the strategy is here. As you guys know, pretty much in each phase, there there are minions, and you have to take out one of these minions right away. There are minions in phase one of Nihilus, phase two is Scion, Shreya has the lightsaber minions, and four, it feels like the whole world is against you, but pretty much you really need to make sure you take out a minion as quickly as possible so that Death Trooper can use his Terminate ability and apply Death Mark as early as possible. You then want to go ahead and apply Death Mark to the raid boss. Now, for example, in phase one, one of the most successful phases for this team is applying Deathmark on Nihilus as quickly as possible. And then Magma Trooper comes in and starts having a lot of fun. Whenever you have the Deathmark on the raid boss, let's say Darth Nihilus in this situation, you want Magma Trooper to always use his basic. Don't use Thermal Imploder. You want to constantly use your basic on the Deathmark raid boss because when you're doing that, Magma Trooper is hitting the boss up to two times and triggering the effects of Deathmark two times. And if you don't know, Deathmark is kind of similar to Expose where they're doing a percent damage to the raid boss so over time you're dealing a lot of damage because of magma trooper's basic hitting two times on the death mark raid boss and at this point you're probably like okay no big deal but hold your horses because it gets really interesting if you go and read the descriptions for the raid bosses for example darth niles unique lord of hunger anytime one of your allies is hitting darth niles with a basic ability Darth Niles is inflicting defense down on that ally for one turn and hold up what happens when you apply a debuff to Magma Trooper? When Darth Niles is inflicting that defense down because Magma Trooper used his basic on him, he's constantly applying defense down and Thrawn's leadership is constantly giving Magma Trooper 20% turn meter and Magma Trooper's unique is kicking in and he's giving himself 70% turn meter. So every time Magma Trooper is using his basic attack on Darth Nihilus, he's constantly gaining 90% turn meter and pretty much he's looping his basic ability over and over and over again. And if Death Mark is on Darth Nihilus, for example, you're piling on a ton of damage due to the frequency of Magma Trooper taking his turn and his basic constantly hitting Darth Nihilus for two hits. I know I'm talking about the Phase 1 Darth Nihilus stage quite a lot, but this also works for other phases such as the Darth Scion stage in Phase 2 because Darth Scion, on his own unique, he has the chance to apply pain on the enemy that attacked him. So right there when pain's being inflicted to Magma Trooper, he's gaining turn meter, have that death mark on Scion, and constantly loop Magma Trooper's basic attack so you can constantly keep triggering all those lovely additional damage bonuses from Deathmark. So pretty much the summary of this strategy is have a phase where there are many 
minions that you can take out and trigger Death Trooper's Death Mark and then have Magma Trooper constantly use his basic only against the raid boss so the raid boss applies a debuff to Magma Trooper so he constantly feeds himself turn meter. This is such a unique strategy and I'm absolutely loving it. It's a team that doesn't need Jedi training raid, does awesome damage for all phases of the Sith raid and on top of that Magma Trooper is a free to play character and this is a situation where you might not even want to gear up Magma Trooper because the more you gear up Magma Trooper he's gaining more protection through the gear levels and in return that extra gear is just giving Darth Nals extra protection when Magma Trooper is constantly using his basic. And just as a side note you guys may already know this because I made videos in the past but Magma Trooper also does well in the Rancor Raid. The turn meter removal does great from his thermal imploder so if you're trying to create a beginner turn meter removal squad for the Rancor as I've said in the past Magma Trooper does some decent turn meter removal to conquer that Rancor Raid. But that is it for today's video ladies and gentlemen thank you guys so much for watching and hopefully you did enjoy this video and learned a lot about how Magma Trooper has a lot of use in the current state of the game and if you did enjoy this video go ahead leave me a like comment down below let me know what you're thinking of Magma Trooper or other ideas that you may have and be sure to subscribe guys so you're not missing a thing and as always <laughs>